between all the settings named things like azimuth, anti-aliasing, and the pressure curve, and the hundreds of sliders that change your brush if you so much as breathe on them, the Brush Studio and Procreate can start to feel like one big mysterious science lab where you're just kind of lost, hoping you don't break anything. A lot of people open the Brush Studio just to make some minor tweaks and some minor adjustments, but when they look at all of the features, all of the attributes you can change, all of the settings you can change, it can be a little intimidating. It's a lot of stuff. You might get overwhelmed and just never go back. But understanding how the Brush Studio operates, what the brush settings actually mean and what they do can be really key to leveling up your Procreate skills. Understanding how to play in the Brush Studio just makes it a lot more fun. You can experiment and make your own brushes. You can learn how each setting can change the feel and look of your art. And you can start creating tools that match your personal style. So let's go ahead and make sense of it together, even if you're a beginner. First, we'll take a step inside the Brush Studio and see where it all happens. And you can access it in two ways. You can tap on an existing brush to see how it's built, or tap on the plus icon in the brush library to create a completely new brush of your own. Once you open the Brush Studio, you'll see that it's divided into three main parts. The Attributes menu on the left, the Settings panel in the middle, and the Drawing Pad on the right. The left menu is where you'll find all the attributes that make up your brush. There are 14 in total. Each one controls a different part of your brush's personality. Now when you tap on any of these categories, the middle panel changes to show that attribute's individual settings. This is where you'll find the sliders, the toggles, and the buttons that control all your brush's behavior. Every slider can be adjusted just by dragging, but if you want precise control, you can tap on the number next to it and type in the exact value, or even use the Apple Pencil scribble feature to write it in. And some of these sliders have a little bit extra depth to them as well. If they're connected to tilt, pressure, or barrel roll, you can open the advanced settings and link those brush behaviors to that specific slider. And finally, on the right side, you'll see the drawing pad. Basically, it's your test canvas. Think of it like a notepad where you can scribble and instantly see how your changes affect the brush in real time. You can clear the pad anytime by scrubbing with three fingers or tapping the little square and pencil icon at the top. That menu also lets you change the preview size, switch preview colors, or even reset the brush if you want to start fresh. The drawing pad is one of the most useful parts of the brush studio because being able to see how your brush behaves in real time just really helps you keep the flow in making your brush. You don't have to keep going in and out of the brush studio to see how your changes have affected your brush behavior. You never have to leave the editor to test your settings. You can just experiment, adjust, and see results instantly. Now let's go ahead and quick fire all of the main brush attributes inside the brush studio. But if you want me to deep dive into any of these attributes, comment below and I will dedicate an entire video to that attribute so that we all understand it better. So first up is Stroke Path. Stroke Path controls how your brush marks flow across the canvas. You can adjust spacing for smoother lines, jitter for more texture. Stabilization controls how steady your lines are as you draw. It smooths out shaky strokes automatically and it's great for line art, lettering, or inking. You can adjust streamline, motion filtering and stabilization to find your ideal balance between control and fluidity. Taper shapes the beginning and end of your strokes. Increasing taper gives you those sharp, elegant points like a real brush or a pen lifting off the paper. It gives that calligraphic or calligraphy look. Shape determines the actual shape of the brush tip, kind of like a stamp that repeats along your stroke. You can import your own shapes too. You can even draw your own shapes and make a brush out of that. Grain defines the texture inside the brush. Think of it as what the brush is painting with. Smooth ink, rough paper, watercolor pigment, etc. Next is the rendering tab. Rendering controls how Procreate blends each dab of paint together. This affects how soft, opaque, or realistic your brush feels, especially for different painting styles. This section also holds the new setting called Alpha Threshold, and this is great for making pixel art. Next is Wet Mix. Wet Mix adds a traditional painting feel by controlling how colors mix and smear together. You can make brushes feel like wet paint, dry pastel, or anything in between. Color Dynamics. This lets your brush automatically shift color as you draw. It's great for making multicolored strokes, subtle hue variation, natural shading effects, or even dual color outline brushes. Dynamics adjust how your brush reacts to speed and pressure. For example, making strokes wider when you draw faster or press harder. The Apple Pencil tab. This fine tunes how your Apple Pencil interacts with your brush. You can control pressure, 
tilt or even barrel roll if you have the Apple Pencil Pro, of course. And this is for expressive, natural results. I've found that the settings for opacity and size are important to pair with the settings that you have on the taper section. Anytime I want a brush to have taper, I make sure I have set my correct settings on the taper section in the Apple Pencil section. The Properties tab is where you set your brush size limits and your opacity limits. And this setting has been cut in half. Some of the settings that were in this tab are now in the Preview tab, and we'll talk about that one in a minute. The Materials tab is how you can adjust the brush for metallic and roughness to create real world materials and finish from matte to shiny. And this is for a lot of 3D painting. I don't do a whole lot of 3D painting, but this is where you set your brush behaviors for that. This is kind of a section for shape and grain, but for metallics and 3D. There's even a source library within this section. It's almost its own little brush studio inside the brush studio. Next is the preview tab. In this tab, you can adjust how your brush looks inside the library, including the size and orientation of the preview stroke. It's mostly visual, but it's handy for keeping brush that's organized. And this is where you can change it to a stamp preview. So they took some settings from the previous property section and put it now into this new preview section and it's just been expanded a little bit more so that you can control how your brush looks from the outside. And finally is the about this brush section. Here is where you can name your brush, add your signature, you can add a picture and this is really important if you are sharing or selling your brush. You want to make sure that no one can steal your brush and sell it from under you. So those were all the attributes to the brush studio. But now let's talk about the settings that are actually kind of confusing. The ones like azimuth and the tilt graph and all those sliders that seem a little bit more confusing than they actually are. These settings are really just about how your brush reacts on how you move your hand and how you move your pencil. Once you understand them, they're actually surprisingly simple and really fun to play with. The first one to start off with is azimuth. And azimuth sounds really complicated, and I've never actually heard this term outside of digital art, but it's really not that complicated. It's really just how your brush reacts on how you tilt your Apple Pencil. When azimuth is on, the brush shape rotates naturally with your pencil angle. Imagine a calligraphy pen that changes changes direction as you move your hand. Next, let's talk about the tilt graph, and this is in the Apple Pencil section. The tilt graph looks intimidating, but it's actually a map of how your brush changes as you tilt the Apple Pencil. Your Apple Pencil can tilt anywhere from zero degrees to 90 degrees. Zero degrees meaning it's laying almost flat against the canvas, and 90 degrees meaning it's perfectly upright. Zero degrees, 90 degrees, Kind of makes sense, right? You can drag the blue dot on the tilt graph to set what's called a trigger point, basically telling Procreate once I tilt my pencil past this angle, change how the brush behaves. For example, if you set your trigger point to around 45%, your brush could only stay sharp and precise when you're drawing upright, but then switch to a softer, wider stroke once you tilt your pencil. Kind of like a real graphite pencil that can draw fine lines or shade smoothly just by changing the angle of your hand. Another one that confuses people is the pressure curve, and this is also in the Apple Pencil section. It's just telling Procreate how sensitive your brush is to pressure. The pressure sensitivity graph controls how Procreate reacts to how hard you press your pencil. By default, Procreate expects you to press pretty hard to reach full pressure or opacity. The graph lets you change that. The line on the graph shows how your pressure translates into brush response. The horizontal axis, left to right, is your physical pressure, how hard you're pressing. The vertical axis, your up and downy one, is the brush's response like thickness or opacity. If you move the curve left to right, your brush will respond faster to lighter pressure, meaning you won't have to press as hard to get a strong line. If you move it to the right, you'll need to press harder before Procreate gives you full opacity or size. So if you're a light-handed artist, move the curve left. If you're a heavy-handed one, move it right. You can even tap to add points along the curve for more control, making the transition smoother or more dramatic depending on what feels best for your drawing style. So those are so scary, right? These are just the different ways that Procreates translates what your hand's doing or what your Apple Pencil's doing. Once you understand the logic behind these settings, you can experiment with a lot more confidence. But there is an entire feature of the Brush Studio that's hidden that a lot of people overlook, but I personally find it super helpful and I love playing with it. I'm talking about the source library. It's that little button inside the shape or grain section that opens up a whole collection of textures and brush shapes that come built in to Procreate. Most people never even notice it's there, but it's like a little mini treasure chest of creative tools that you already have. So let me tell you how it works. 
every brush inside Procreate is built up of two images, the shape and the grain. The shape controls the stamp your brush uses and the grain controls the texture it paints with. The source library gives you dozens of ready-made options for both, from smooth calligraphy nibs to chalky textures, watercolor washes, ink splatters, and even fabric-like grains. And this is where it gets really fun. You can mix and match them. Try pairing a splatter grain with a smooth round shape or a texture grain with a tapered pen and you get a brush that looks totally custom, even if you didn't make anything from scratch. This is the easiest way to experiment, just swapping shapes and grains and you can make something that is completely unique and something that probably can't even exist in real traditional art. What you make will likely exist only in digital art. And of course, if you wanna take it even further, you can import your own shapes or grains from photos, textures, or scans. So if you have a real paint texture that you love or even a pattern from your sketchbook, you can literally turn it into a Procreate brush. So yeah, the source library is one of those little hidden treasures that has been sitting there all along. And once you start playing with it, you'll never look at brushes the same way. You're gonna start decoding what has made up these brushes and that's a really fun part of it. Okay, so now that we know what these settings do, let's go ahead and make a brush together. I love a good crayon style brush, so I wanna make another one just using the source library and the settings within the brush studio. And I wanna make sure I add a taper on it. Adding taper will make it a beautiful liner for your illustrations, and we can make it with just a few settings. So here in the brush libraries, I just have a section that I have for in development, and I have a special brush set that I have just for experimenting. So I'm gonna put my brush we're gonna make it right here in this brush set. So to start, I'm gonna tap on the plus sign here and then choose create new brush. And the first thing I wanna do is choose my shape source and my grain source just to kind of set the tone for what we want to make. So I'm gonna to go to shape and then edit, import, and source library. And of course you can choose any Anything you want but I mentioned I love making a crayon style brush so I'm gonna go for the obvious I'm gonna choose crayon here and then I'll just tap on done and done again and I'm not gonna change a whole lot about what these other settings are we've gone over them but again if you want to deep dive on any of these let me know in the comments and we'll dedicate a whole video to that but I did want to show you how this angle axis works here these go together and you can see how they kind of change the shape and angle of even just a circle it turns it into more of an oval you can flip it around you can flip the axes here or just keep them how they are the cool part about this drawing pad you can see in real time how these things work okay let's stay on track let's go over to grain and choose our grain source now so tap on grain and then we'll edit and then import and then go to that amazing source library and again you can choose anything you want but I really like this one called Bonobo. So how these work is everything that's white is what's gonna show up on your brush. And a really cool thing that you can do is invert these images with two taps and it inverts it and now it has more of a surface area of how your brush is going to interpret that into what your brush stroke looks like. So I've inverted it and I'm really happy with how this texture looks. So I will go ahead and tap on done. You can kind of see how it changed here, but if you wanted to increase the scale so you have more of that texture, it increased the image in size so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm keeping this grain behavior on moving so the grain will move as my brush stroke moves, but if you want it just to be textured so that it's kind of like a picture of this texture, every that you draw in, you can change it to that, but I don't really want that, I want it to move with me. Okay, so now that we've set the tone of our brush, let's go ahead and change the other settings and start from the beginning. So I'm gonna go to stroke path, and I'm okay with the spacing here, gonna leave it how it is, but I want to change the jitter lateral, and you can use your slider to have it go between 20 and 22%. Uh, you can be more, more precise if you want, but I'm cool with that right there. But this just gives it a slight edge variation and more of an organic look. Next we'll go to stabilization and I wanna use this as a liner. So I'm gonna increase the streamline to about 50% and if I can't get precise, I'll just type it in. I get a little heavy handed and being able to type in the numbers 
uh, is very important for me. And I'm gonna change the motion filtering. You can change this between about 20 and 25%. So I'm just gonna do 22% specifically. This will just filter out the kind of jitteriness in my hand, especially if I have too much coffee, which happens a lot. So now we'll go to taper. And the first thing I'll do is I'll bring in the pressure taper sliders and the touch taper sliders. These sliders give you a visual representation of how much artificial taper is at the beginning and end of your stroke. So you move the sliders toward the middle of the stroke to adjust the taper length. You can set the taper at the beginning of the stroke, at the end of the stroke, or both like what I'm doing here. So I already did the shape, I already did the grain, so I'm gonna go to the rendering tab and I'm gonna change this to intense blending and just keep all of the other settings as they are. So I don't really wanna change any of the other settings. I wanna go directly to Apple Pencil so to get the taper that I want, so you'll see that in this preview that you're not seeing any taper on it. So this is where I mentioned before that you need to pair the settings with the Apple Pencil. This is just in my experience, pairing the settings on the Apple Pencil will actually put that taper into effect for me. So the first one I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the size to max, and then I'm gonna go down opacity all the way to zero. And then you can already see how that has added some taper. I'm pretty much happy with how this brush is now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tap on done, and I'm gonna give it a name here. Tap on apply. So this makes a pretty organic, calligraphic liner brush and it's part pen, part crayon. It's something that is completely unique to digital art since it's hard to make this in real life. At least I've never seen a calligraphic crayon. So that's essentially how the brush studio operates. Once you understand it, you can start creating brushes that feel exactly how you want them. And you know what you're doing. You're not just guessing and checking. So if you liked this deep dive into the brush studio as a whole, make sure you subscribe. I am dedicated to helping you feel more confident with complicated art stuff and making your creative journey a whole lot more fun along the way. And you can start by watching this video right here where I focus on the alpha threshold setting and how this one tiny setting can change how you create an, an entire art style. So go ahead and watch that one right there.